Hello everyone, welcome back to Close to Be Milkshake. I am your host, along with support puppet. Let's get uh, uh, Mr. Chicken. Yes. Today we're gonna talk about uh weakness in narcissistic individuals um and maybe other cluster bees. Uh you know, I love when you guys share with the class, so please do. <laughs> All right, so um, narcissists, we project um, our own weaknesses onto you. We were trained, every time I fucking say that, it's like um, motherfucking boot camp, you know? Um, Please, if you are thinking about getting pregnant um, or you grew up in a rigid household or something, um, this isn't the military, okay? You know, there needs to be a lot of empathetic dumping into these little bundles of joy, <laughs> all right? Anyways, we were trained in childhood that there is no forgiveness. If we forgive, you're only gonna hurt us again. So, you know, a parent is going to um, intermittent reinforcement the fuck out of us. And then we, you know, are gonna be like, okay, you know, thank you for being nice to me or giving me something. And then <laughs> um, the parent just does it the fuck again. The same fucking thing. And this gets ingrained in our tiny little brains. And then, you know, we are going to um, take this into our own relationships. And I see this all the time. I even did this myself. It's like, I am not going to be that parent. And I'm that parent. It... Okay. <sighs> there is no pleasing the original caregiver because we would be condemned for falling short again and again. So why keep trying to please you? I mean, doesn't it suck? It's like uh, this um, veil is over from um, the past and the present. You know, it's like we're reliving um, our childhood just constantly in the present moment. It's like I can't I can't forgive you. I can't forgive you because you're just going to hurt me. And then we're in this fog where we're doing the same bullshit and don't see it. <laughs> it's really frustrating when, you know, you go behind the curtain in your own bullshit and you're just like, oh my God. All right. If we are criticized, this re-traumatize us and we will punish you with harsh criticisms too. Now I did um, a video on why narcissists are hypersensitive, going very in depth why this happens. Please watch that if you have not. Having someone care for us doesn't feel real. Now I'm telling you that Yes, I want, I want, I want to have a good reflection. I want to be, you know, loved and cared for. I, I'm entitled to this, that, and the other thing, but that's just the outer crust of who we are, the false self. Inside is the, you know, vulnerable um, inner child that's buried so deep that some of us killed them off. So we don't have to look at that weakness anymore because our inner child was weak as fuck when, you know, we were growing up and we don't want to look at it anymore. So having someone care for us, we don't believe it. We don't trust it. What do you want from us? You know, are you giving us something because you want something? And if you look at my video on uh, codependence and narcissists are, you know, more like than you know, you're going to see that, yes, you are trying to buy 
your people's love through your care and love. Nothing is given freely. Nothing. You want something in return. This is why um, you're always holding resentments, bitching and complaining. You're doing, you're overly doing. I'm not saying don't do, but you're overly doing. And then the bare minimum is being given and then you're, I mean, you're not even fucking thankful for anything. You know, it's like you have to match my giving level. That shit is like fucking the Matterhorn, dude. It's like, I can't fucking do that much. I can't! <laughs> okay, anyway. Where am I on my notes? All right. Being vulnerable as children, our feelings were dismissed, shamed, or laughed at. So we stopped being vulnerable, and when we let that slip in our relationships, we hate ourselves for looking weak and we will start to push you away. Hmm. It's like, um, you know, we have to build up this um, strong fortress. And when you are able to finally get into the center, um, we, we can't fucking handle it. We can't handle it. And so we're going to push you behind a barrier and then another and then another this is why nothing you do will ever be good enough we are living on autopilot reacting to past imprints in the present we are fighting against ourselves you are just the mirror now you guys call everything we do as a game but we're not playing with you we're playing against ourselves. You're just the deck of cards. That's it. You know, moving around the chess pieces, that's it. I am playing against me. In my Cluster B chat group, people spoke on pushing past their feelings of weaknesses, being um, uncomfortable but removing the ego in that moment with their partners and being glad they did to get past the conflict um they were actually i'm um, talking about people with um uh narcissism and antisocial personality disorder <clears throat> and some antisocials were talking about um their borderline partners and, you know, they do say, I'm not taking responsibility for um, every fucking little emotion um, or huge, you know, emotional feeling and everything that their partners have, but they are going to um, create that safe space. They're not going to punish their partners and they're going to try to get to the root um, of the issue before it escalates. Um, another one of them said that um, when they feel their anger coming on, you know, it's, it's, um, what did he say? He said it was like a train, right? And the train is just coasting right now. This is the anger coming up. So you're being triggered about something and the train is coasting. And he says that you want to stop the train while it's coasting before it starts storming full speed ahead into their people. Great, great analogy. And when I was um, recently, um, I was going through my notes and I used to go through my notes or not go through my notes. I used to um, type up a well thought out um, message when I would be in conflict with my person. You know, I wanted to make sure that I'm getting all of my thoughts across, that I'm not attacking my person, because if I'm not, <laughs> if I'm just reacting, you know, all of this um, garbage is gonna be dumped on my person. So I'd write it in the notes section before I would send it to him. And I found them the other day. And I'm reading through them, and I was communicating 
um, to my partner over specific, you know, issues that we were having, trying to get to the root cause of them. I'm not saying that I've never um, projected on my partner in the past of things that you know had nothing to do with him, um, which I took responsibility for later. But these things that I was trying to express to him during times of conflict, they were the same fucking things. Nothing was getting resolved. Nothing. And because my brain is like oatmeal, you know, it's like um, over time, because, you know, we wouldn't fight all the time. It'd be like once every three weeks or some shit. But um, so, you know, and I'm looking over and this is my memory. And I'm like, we're fighting over the same fucking thing. And I'm looking in my journal and I'm writing about the same fucking thing. So now I know that um, th this was never, never going to get resolved because it was brought up to be resolved. It, nothing, nothing, nothing. Okay, so in person, um, even even my loving actions or willingness not to attack my person um, was seen as a weakness. And I was punished harder. I was punished harder. He wanted me out of um, the castle. He let me know that I um, made my way in, that I was able to jump over and get inside. But um, he started to push me out, outside. And I was getting little microaggressions over and over and over again. Let me see how far I can push her before she snaps. And I would leave. I would always leave. You know, it's like, why am I going to stay here when I know that you are pushing me away? This is what you want. And if I stay, that's me saying that um, you can continue to be this fucking way towards me. Hurtful. So I was blamed for abandonment. Something would happen to me. I would be like, no, that's a boundary of mine. I'm leaving. And then I get blamed for, for um, abandoning, you know, the fucking relationship. So, no, I am removing myself from bad treatment. That is the difference. If someone doesn't believe they deserve love, they are going to sabotage all access to receiving it. This is why when um, you see them pushing or doing things, um, not taking your feelings into consideration, even, even if they're not able to, you know, low empathy, they can't connect to how you feel. They're just, you know, toddlers. We're going to do whatever the fuck we want. We don't care. We don't care. Even after you tell them over and over and over again how you do feel. And then they see that, you know, well, now I'm just getting um, bitched at over and over and over again for the same old shit. Then they're going to push, push, push. Um, the abuse may go up higher and then you know until you finally fucking bail them this is what they want i don't want to hear um a cluster b saying everybody abandons me this is what you want you want them to leave you and you're getting your wish So don't run after these people who want to be left in their island of suffering. Take that boat off that island and go to, you know, your tropical island of healing. Yeah. Yes. Motherfucking 
Fantasy Island is there. The plane, the plane. Here you come. Okay? All right. I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Namaste.